tea in cafes. And I'm trying to say, you know, I need to put my glasses on. I just did a live in the Wakoinda group <laughs> <laughs> on how they can find, you know, they're changing the laws here. And I'm trying to explain to everyone that they should be looking for jobs or setting up businesses in the cannabis industry. And black people, you need to get on. You know, it's, it's very important. We're gonna have our own black mama teapots. You know, you know, I make a black mama hemp tea right now. In the tea bag, I have the patent for the tea bag. I make the, um, the hemp teas right now with the CBD. Mm -hmm. But in the recreational area, you know, I'm not a smoker, but I need to make sure that I'm servicing a variety of different customers. Absolutely. And yeah. the industry moves along. You know, I can't be, um, I can't be judgmental. I'm not. I'm not going to be judgmental when it comes to economics. Mm. <laughs> yeah. what it's about, right? Ultimately, we're all here to kind of um, uh, improve our financial stability. And if uh, cannabis is a way forward, then who are we to argue against it? <laughs> Listen, I'm about generational wealth, okay? Yeah. So as far as I'm concerned, for those who don't want to get on, that's your business. But I'm pushing forward ahead with or without you because too many years, black people, our people, no matter where we are in the world, we create products and then we're left behind because either uh, resources or just not even resources, access. Because I know black people who, you know, wealthy black people who still mentally don't have the access to things because they think it's not accessible. And that was what I was talking about today. Listen, I'm in America. I own a company called Black Mama Vodka. I, I'm a licensed distiller. And you know what? No white man held me down to, do, to, to stop me. We got to stop thinking about that at this point. Now, there's so much that's out there that's accessible to us. I feel like I'm a kid in a candy store. <laughs> 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 you know, because of the simple fact that the information, thank goodness for Facebook, the internet, because there's no more of the way to have things held down, you know, information with help. Information is withheld, but at some point in time, it's leaked. Somebody finds it, and it's that person's business to share it with everyone. That's why I'm always sharing. I don't know if you guys are familiar with the LaCoin group. Yep. Yeah, we are. Yeah. Right. Now, did you see the interview I did with Getting That Free Land? I, I saw something, actually, Vanessa, but um, I saw... Oh, sorry, sorry. I, I jumped in there. Sorry, obviously, I've been um, communicating. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, but weren't you doing something to do with... Was that, was that to do with you and Lamar doing something? Was that something separate? Because you were looking for... Su or you were reviewing or... or looking for some land in Kentucky somewhere at some point. Was that something totally different? The first interview was basically, he just got to know me the first time and they are looking at getting land. Oh, they I are, okay. Company, right, I have my company now five years. Yeah. I'm the CEO and president of Black Mama Vodka. I've had this company for five years under the radar doing business. Okay, they say gangsters move in silence, I do. I make my, <laughs> I make my money silently. <laughs> We got to stay under the radar doing the things that we're doing. I don't like to put it out. I only put it out there when I'm ready for everybody to know. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. By then, it's too late. We have to move like that. Mm -hmm. It's too late. Paperwork's done. Product's on the market. You know, mm -hmm. that's how we have to move. You know, and it's unfortunate. And you get the information. I started Black Mama Vodka five years ago. Um, I used my own money, no loans. You know, I did take part of my husband's 401k too. You know, <laughs> <laughs> hey, you know, you married, we be married, so everything got to be together. We have children, so <laughs> this is for, but he knew that it's for the legacy of our children. That was my concern when I started um, Black Mama Vodka. Um, it was for the legacy of our children. 
our children. So when I'm well gone, when I'm gone, which is 100 years from now, or 100 years from now, <laughs> it'll still be around. We don't have any companies like that that I know of. You know, not in America. I don't know if it's in the UK. I don't know if it's in Canada. But we don't have long-term companies like the Rockefellers, like J.P. Morgan. Look at these companies. So when I started that, a lot of people kept asking me five years later, Vanessa, I want to invest. I want to do something. And I always have to say no, because everybody want to come in when stuff is happening and it's good and you're making money. I'm not doing that unless you've bitten out $2 billion because I already put the work in. Mm -hmm. But now when Obama changed the rules in the U.S. with the Job Act, he changed the rules, whereas now small companies, small caps, or just new startups can now get investors from everywhere, from unaccredited investors. Now, I think the law, I don't know if the laws are the same way in, on the FTSE in, in London, how the investment structure works, but foreigners and everybody else can invest in startups in the U.S. So that's why I started Black Mama Tea and Cafes as an extension of the Black Mama brand. So everybody can invest in that. I've invested. That way, we'll build Black Mama Teas and Cafes. We're building one here in New York. We're actually building three. Building three in New York, but the first one we're going to start after this round closed, June 15th. We're going to start working on the first location. I just need one because I already have franchise approval in several states. And I have 222 franchisees that's on the sideline waiting. I'd like to build in the UK because I have a UK satellite office. So that is definitely something I'm gonna to wanna to do. Well, well that brings us on to some good questions that come from, yeah, I went through the WeFunder page and it's got a lot of great information in there. I think it's yeah. an opportunity you're putting together. Uh, but I do have some questions around a couple of things, right? Uh, one of them is, is, Fundamentally, I believe that the market for tea in the UK is huge, right? As, as a nation, we're much more of a historically tea drinking country than the US, right? US is traditionally more coffee drinkers. You're getting into tea now. Uh, the UK. What's your question? <laughs> <laughs> well, 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 maybe I'm getting off track now, right? But I think fundamentally, the appetite for tea in the UK is huge, right? Yeah, it is. So, much, it's, much bigger than the US, I can yeah. tell you that. So, so that's kind of what I'm getting to, is that how, how far down the road do you see that kind of extension into the UK and potential franchisee opportunities over here? How soon you want to be a franchisee? Well, I mean, <laughs> uh, let's, just, let's just say I'm, I'm interested, but we'd need to work out the details and the logistics and all that, that kind of stuff. But, you know, I think the market's ready now, right? If hey, I'm ready now, too. <laughs> all I'm, I'm ready now. That's why I incorporated in the UK. So that way I'm ready. I'll be ready to move forward with that. You know, I have family in the UK. But if there's somebody that wants to be a franchisee, listen, Wherever somebody wants to be a franchisee, before I open up a corporate location, I'm all game. I have no problem flying. Look, I just flew to Kansas, okay? <laughs> I have no problems with that. We don't have to wait until I open a corporate store in that location because I'm setting everything up here. Once this corporate location is open, which I would anticipate the fall, which is in October, because I've extended the raise to June, you know, I don't get the money until July. Then we're going to start building. You know, we would do an October, we'd probably be the September, end of September, October, but a fall, which would be great because it'll be our pumpkin spice season. And we'll be rolling right into the holidays mm -hmm. because we'll have Black Mama Vodka. That's my the fourth quarter is my business season with liquor. Remember, these locations are also going to have Black Mama, have a bar in there. 
Mm. If you looked at the updates, so that's, the, that's, a, that's a body. That's your body. You're going to have in the evening. You have to drink in the evening time. That you can drink any time you want. Oh, is it? <laughs> You're expecting the customers to ask for it in the evening, but if they want it at nine a.m., they can have it, right? <laughs> if the laws don't stop you, <laughs> then bring it. Okay. I just saw uh, because you know people have um. What they have, they have that tomato juice with vodka in the morning. Oh, you know? Bloody Mary. Yeah. Right. But I make a chai tea vodka. I found out there's a couple of restaurants out here that serve my chai tea vodka in the morning. Mm. I said, what? <laughs> <laughs> well, I said, that's, that's a good look. That's really a good look. So, you know, we're being creative with the menus just as well. And so it'll have the liquor. So, so in the UK, you have to have a liquor license if you're going to be a franchise. You know, the beautiful thing about the UK is 18 and over. <laughs> you know, so that's one. You're going to have the teas. It's not just the tea. Now, New York, let me just say, the US alone consumes 1.5 million pounds a day consumption of just tea. I moved 5 million pounds last year of just tea and herbs. They do 1.5 million a day. I can imagine and I, what the UK, the UK has got to do three times as much because the UK, Europe is a tea drinking country. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Period. Yeah. You know, and the things, and I'm not, I don't plan to have things such as tea, lattes, and all that, all that crap, I can't deal with chemicals. You know, a lot of that stuff has a lot of heavy chemicals in it when you're doing sweeteners, big time sweetener. I make a Black Mama Agave, which is a low glycemic sweetener. I deal with organic. You know, everything in a Black Mama tea and cafe is organic. It's a healthy cafe that serves vodka or liquor with a bar. You know, that's what they call it. So you won't be able to compete really with Starbucks because Starbucks don't have a liquor license. Mm -hmm. I do, you know, so that's the beauty of having that. Also, each location will have a meeting space. If you looked on the um, WeFund and you looked at the updates and did you see the architectural conceptual design? Yeah, I saw that. Yeah. Man, that meeting space. Yeah. So mm -hmm. you can rent the meeting space out. You know, have free Wi Fi, video yeah. conference, and everything, right? Yeah. Conference, TV, yeah. You see how, for example, let's say somebody, we have 500 locations and we have Black Mama Tees all over the world. That's my ideal thing. And a lot of people are solopreneurs, they have their own businesses. Nobody want to sit down, nobody sits in the office anymore. <laughs> Everybody's mobile. But if you wanted to have a meeting with somebody in, New York, they can go to the Black Mama Teas and Cafe in London, in the UK, rent the video conferencing for an hour to talk to somebody or a group of people in New York and have official meeting instead of having to do it at their home or do something, you know what I mean? Where you can do that. Also, you can basically, I'm thinking about implementing, I know here, and I'm going to give each franchisee the liberty. With having a meeting space, it's also going to be a training. For example, here, you know how people go to the library and they pay $50 or they pay $100 to learn marketing on the internet or to learn, you know, QuickBooks training. This is where you can hire some of these professors that are independent, pay them for the day or pay them for the hour, and then you have classes. You can have one at 12 o'clock and then one at 3 o'clock. One at nine, one at 12, and one at three. It's up to you, you know, but what you're doing is you're bringing in money into, you up, you, you awake? You look like you're going to sleep on me. Come on, man. <laughs> <laughs> that, that, that's a video freezing, trust me. <laughs> oh, you ain't boring. I know I ain't that boring. This red hair <laughs> shit. <laughs> no, 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 you go ahead, girl. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so 
That way you bring it in, he's laughing. That way you bring it in money just as well when you may not have, and you're utilizing that room for other things just as well. And people will do that, you know? So that's why you'll have the meeting space. The other thing too is I put in an application for um, Amazon. I don't know if they have it out there. You ever heard of Amazon lockers? Yeah, we have that over yeah. here. Yeah, you got it, yeah. That is, that is a great idea, like you said, in terms of increasing your footfall. People coming in to pick up packages, they might want to have a tea or a donut or whatever it is while they're waiting or sitting down. Yeah. And I think that is a really, really cool idea. Yeah, but Amazon is paying rent. They're going to pay, they pay rent. Yeah, here. They're going to pay rent to have their lockers in the space. In addition, you can make money off of the advertising. Like, for example, the front of the lockers, let's say you sold to Chevrolet or Ford, whatever, or some sort of big Avengers movies coming out. You can sell the advertising on the front of the lockers, and Amazon is going to split the, the advertising profits with whoever's hosting. You know, so that's why I'm, we got to make sure... Like even with the leases on the buildings I own, I make sure that if it's a lease, then you can sublease because we want to be able to have Amazon lockers that are there. They're changing the game. And their customers are going to always going to come in to bring their packages or get their packages on a regular basis because Amazon is so large. Yeah. So we want to make sure that we have that. Yeah. So I already put my, my application in and they're just waiting for the first location so they can set it up. Okay. But any type of, you know, in each space, there should be money. You know, there's a retail end of it just as well, because it's going to be retail shops, you know, for the teas. We blend our own teas, different types of teas. But then we have our own hemp teas. We have our own CBD teas. We have our own Black Mama teapots, you know, which will go very well in London and UK. <laughs> <laughs> so are, are, you, are you growing your own tea then? Well, you, I know you said you're, low, you're, you're sourcing all the teas. Right now, right now I'm, I import the teas. Okay. Right now, I import from Japan, from China, um, from South Africa. I just got some Senegalese tea just, just yesterday. She just sent that to me. You know, um, Turkey, India. I import from Mexico. You know, I have an import-export license. And then for my vodka, I export to... London to Hong Kong, a um, couple of other places, um, France, I export to. So for me, I have an exporter's license and I'm bonded. So I also import. But when I got hurt with this, t with this Chinese guy here with my Chinese tea, then when I said, you know, what, we can grow here. So I'm going to be moving. It takes a guy a good three years. So if they can, you know, we got a couple of investors, people who invested, who own land, like 400 acres, 40 acres. So I've started talking to them, tell them, that, you know, what I need grown, and they're going to start working on this, the teas. But it's not just the teas. I use chamomile. I use echinacea, um, rosebuds. I got dandelions. Mm -hmm. These things come from, these are things that I need for the tea. Yeah. And do you have, do you have, mm -hmm. is it merengue as well? Do you use yeah, merengue? Oh. I'm going to say the same thing. Merengue I bring in from Ecuador. I bring in from Ecuador. It's okay. organic. Yeah, I bring in the merengue. And then we can, I get it pulverized already so it comes in as a powder because I'm making my own blend of merengue tea. I can't stand the merengue by itself, uh -huh. you know. <laughs> it tastes like dirt to me. <laughs> so it does. You know, I don't see how anybody can stomach, but I found a way to mask it. Okay. I started taking the merengue powder and blending it into the actual tea leaves. Okay. Of, of the blend. So I'm so I'll be making like a merengue pomegranate, hibiscus merengue. Nobody's got that. You know, because it's very good. You yeah. know, so that way. You know, and, and that way there's no chemicals. I'm not about chemicals. I can't, I can't deal with chemicals and flavor. Mm -hmm. You know, so that's one of my biggest proponents. You know, so as we get older, I don't know how old y'all are, but I'm going to be 50 by the year. So I know I don't look it. <laughs> <laughs> I, 
That's right. <laughs> we're not we're not far behind you, Vanessa. Believe me, <laughs> not. Um, it's a vodka. I keep telling people it's my vodka. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I've got um, I've got a, a a couple. I've got my family over in um the Caribbean in Saint Vincent who um, they yeah. went to their their uh, merengue. But I've got a brother who, over the last probably about nearly two years now, he was he's been building up his orchard. Uh, he lives nice. in Gam- in Gambia, um, nice. and, he, and he um he's been growing his um his his merengue trees and whatever. So um, is he selling it? He's picking it and selling it. Is it has it matured yet? No, 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 no. I think he said he needs something like two and a half years or something for it to, to grow up. I think it needs to go through how many seasons and then, then it's live after that. But every time I go over there, he always has something. He knows it's not quite ready, but I, I like Meringue tea. So I always take a batch back, uh, whatever it is, dry the leaves out and, and just have it like that. You drink it just like that? Just like that, yeah. Oh, God. You got a stone <laughs> stone. <laughs> Yes, you must not have any taste buds. <laughs> I just block it out. I know it's all good, so yeah, I, oh. just, I just block it out. Yeah, <laughs> I've had worse. Well, you can drink. So listen, you can drink Black Mama Merengue tea, which will have the all natural to be blended with the regular tea, so you wouldn't even. Because I drink it every day now. Okay. I blend it with my hibiscus, and I drink it every single day now, which is really, really great. I couldn't do that before. Not by itself. So yeah. I said, okay, that's what I have to do. I have to implement it, you know, into the actual tea bags. And my tea bags are biodegradable. So you get to use the entire tea bag. Let me see if I have one of my tea bags here. You get to use the entire um, tea bags. Like you can tear it once you drink your tea. I have here. This is Martha. Once you drink your tea, you can tear the tea bag, let it dry, the tea leaves dry out. People use it for potpourri. I found that some people smoke my teas. I didn't even know that. That's a whole new thing. <laughs> That's all people know. <laughs> so could that, that could be used for um like manure, right? Could it could it be mixed in with? Um, yeah, the, the tea bag itself, yeah. and you put, I put it in the garden. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. You get to use you know everything. So you don't have to throw away anything, you know, and you don't have any chemicals. A lot of the tea bags out there have a chemical, have a bleaching process on it to make it white on that paper. And they don't have whole tea leaves. It's fanning. It's just the tea dust. I did know? read I did read that on the we 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 we, we fun, fun actually. Yeah. yeah. Funny, that's yeah. Fun. That's, yeah. yeah. And for some people it's okay, but you're not you're not getting the full amount of the antioxidants. That's why Chinese people, they drink regular, you know, they get the tea leaves. When you have the full tea leaves, that's optimal and so much better for you, Mm. you know, in terms of your body. And you want to have it all natural, Mm. you know, which is really, really great. Yeah, again, there's a huge appetite for that over now. Everybody's on the health conscious vibe. Everybody's looking at uh, Big time. Ways where they can incorporate these different herbal teas that are going to be really beneficial for healing properties and giving nutrients to the body. And I, I really see it as a big. I, I also have a, a small little raw vegan juice business as well. So I provide kind of raw vegan juices to people during the summer over here. And I see that as potentially being a, a synergistic thing. Mm-hmm. So when you open up your franchise, I'm going into my warehouse right now. I'm going to my manufacturing facility right now. Everybody just left. When you open up your um, franchise, then we're going to have your juices in there. There you go. Okay, that's what we're going to have to do because we're going to have vegan products in there. Um, you, you see the I don't want to say the junk that Starbucks has, but we have products from other Black-owned businesses, such as Corn Crush. I got their stuff here. It's a, I'll I'll pull it out. I have it in the fridge. Corn Crush. I think you saw that on WeFunder. These are going in some of the investors' packages. They make a vegan product Mm -hmm. out of corn. Um, They make a carrot, coconut, um, they're using my agave to make their um, product, and it's so delicious. Um, these, 
don't know if you can see these, but these are, they're tiny. These are tiny and you can have them cold or you can have them um, in the oven. Mm -hmm. We call these, I was calling them corn crunch, corn, corn crunch munchies. We get the munchies because it's small. <laughs> so we're gonna call them corn crunchies. We're gonna call them corn crunchies. Okay. You know, but a lot of college students, a lot of people. I know people that eat this morning, noon, and night. And we're, you know, the locations are close to the university. So it's so good. My kids love them. She makes it the carrot, banana. She got a pumpkin spice. She has the coconut. She just made a blueberry. Black home sisters. You know, and all they needed was a chance. Yeah. You know, you need a chance. And that's the thing about having Black Mama Teas and Cafe. Having all these locations, now if you have a product or somebody have a product, you can use Black Mama Teas and Cafe as your distribution channel. Yeah. Because it's so hard for smaller brands to get in with larger companies or get into the supermarkets. Utilize the Black Mama Teas and Cafes as your stepping stone. And then allow us to have the first right of refusal to be your distributor just as well. Mm -hmm. Because if you're running your product through 500 locations, then you make making bank. We're helping you and you helping us. But you're getting the exposure. You know, and this is what I'm telling my investors as well. If y'all investing, I'm going to do business with my investors first just as well. Find a product. Because I, like I told Lamar and everybody else, people come to me all the time. I said, listen, if you're not investing, do not look for any money to, to pull out of this company because that's not happening. Mm -hmm. You know, I made my money with my other company. I'm doing this so that way people can get in on the ground floor of a pre-IPO mm -hmm. because when we close this round, I'm doing an IPO. That's why I have to, the SEC gave me this first extension, this only extension to June 15th mm -hmm. because if I don't close the round, I can't get to the next level of doing the actual IPO. Mm -hmm. yeah. So whoever's in, I've already met my, my first minimum tier. And then I met my second threshold where we have the money now to build one of the locations. Mm -hmm. Anything else that come in, that's great. But whatever, whoever's in at $5 per share, at a minimum of 100 shares, whoever's in at June 15th when it closes, that's it. Because my goal is the next level. I've already met, now I got 412 investors. I've already passed, surpassed the threshold, the requirement for the SEC to go public. So now you have to be a reporting company when you have over 400 shareholders. Also, that allows me to list because you need to have 400 shareholders to list on the New York Stock Exchange. People gotta realize the reason why I'm doing this. You know, people come, oh, well, how many, do you need money? already people I'm trying to put y'all on <laughs> you know what I'm saying I have a company already and I'm making the opportunity available for everybody else to get on just like if I went to a venture capitalist so this company I can list on the New York Stock Exchange and that's where the IPO after this close we're working on the IPO and that's going to be 10 to 12 dollars a share because I'm going to list on the New York Stock Exchange. So, one, Vanessa, just one question here. So, when, when we you know, looked at the WeFunder and you've got the minimum investment, which is the $500, and, and then the next step is um, $5,000. No, so, you can invest. No, those are just the perks. You can invest oh. $1,500. Oh, um, okay, okay, okay. Yeah, and then you can come in. If you're going to do additional increments, Okay. It has to be minimum of 500. I have okay. somebody who put in 40,000. You know, okay. white, she put that in. You know, there's people who put in 10. You know, uh, if you add the 25,000 or more, you get mm -hmm. two tickets to the New York Stock Actually, since she put 40,000 in, I'm giving her four tickets to, mm -hmm. you know, the New York Stock Exchange when we list. You can only have a certain amount of people to come on the floor for the New York Stock Exchange. Okay. You know, she's, you know, She's, she's been a customer of mine just on the vodka for a long time. <laughs> and she, yeah, a white woman. And she was like, listen, you doing this? I'm getting in 40,000. She dropped 40 G. I need our black people to be getting in. <laughs> <laughs> out of interest, I wanted to see if I could uh, purchase some of your products over here because it said you had them on Amazon. 
and I couldn't find anything on Amazon UK. Do I have to go on Amazon US and is there kind of a, uh, a shipping cost involved? Why don't you just go to Black Mama T? I ship, you, I ship overseas. Oh, I wasn't aware. Like I was, you offered free shipping and I thought that was just going to be um, uh, domestic. It is. it is. It is free shipping just for US. Okay. But if, but if I'm going to ship to the UK, it's going to be a cost for DHL. Even if what's with Amazon UK, they sell direct. So they sell direct, but not only on the liquor side, but they're doing for me, you know? So that's what that is. The other products are not up on there. Now, if you want to order from the U.S., we just ran out of the agave. <laughs> yeah, because that's why I wanted to get try the, the vodka and the agave, uh, and I couldn't find any on Amazon UK. So uh, We yeah. just ran out. Uh, we got uh, that here right now. They were making it last night. As you can see, this is my facility right here. Good, good, good. You know, so that's my bottling machine. I got a reverse osmosis system over there, which, you know, that, that um, you know, the RO system for the water that purifies the water. Nutrition, yeah, yeah, yeah. So this building, I own this building. It's all 10,000 square feet. So I own the manufacturing. There's no loans or anything. But this is what I'm trying to tell people. I already own this building, all of this, before I started Black Mama Tea's Cam and Cafe. Okay. So Black Mama Tea's and Cafe is for the benefit of everyone to get involved collectively, shareholders, vendors, even my vendors are investing. Because what good is it if you're a vendor and you're extrapolating money from the company, but you're not investing in the company? Tell me, mm. how, how, what, what good is that? For, for the company. So I'm making this more of a collective group based upon my access. I have access to the New York Stock Exchange. I have access, I live here in New York, but I have access because I'm already here and I already have a securities team. So since the laws change, let's do it. I said, there's no time like now, because you know what, if I wait, I don't want something to happen where they're going to change the law. You know, that always happens, right? Somebody does something crazy, and then next thing you know, they change the laws <laughs> again, yeah. and they yeah. make it hard for people. No, let's, it's hard enough going through the SEC and going re regulations. So while they're doing it, I'm doing it too. Yeah. And that way you have somebody that's black on. I'll be the first African-American woman to list on the New York Stock Exchange. We don't have any black companies on the New York Stock Exchange. We have on NASDAQ, but not on New York Stock Exchange. So me, I want to make sure that I make that history and break that record and bring everybody else along as well. And that way, we don't have people manipulating the stock. You still with me, Ian? You look like you're going to fall asleep. <laughs> no, 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 no. I'm, I'm just going to ask you a, I'm just gonna ask you a question. <laughs> I just, what did you say? <laughs> no, no, I was just going to ask you a question. No, no, you know what? I get this all the time. Sometimes people see my facial expressions and it looks like, it looks the opposite of what I'm thinking. <laughs> he looks like he's high nah, or he well, going to sleep. Well, <laughs> I'm just having a little sip of this little, little something, something here because it's been a long day. <laughs> <laughs> I had to mask it. I couldn't put it in a wine glass. I had to just put it in an off-key looking glass. That's all right. <laughs> um, but you know what? I had, I had a question actually, just here where you talked about the, uh, your team. So I just want to know, how did you go about recruiting your team? How did you, how, what was the kind of process around it? Because, yeah, I went on WeFunder and, you know, you're already set up before, but you've got, your, your team looks quite diverse, right? And I just, I'm just, I'm just understanding, how did you go about recruiting your team in the US? And then how would you go about recruiting elsewhere? So if we, you know, if we go around this, maybe doing like a, a franchise down the line, in the UK, um, what are you kind of looking for in a, in a good team to support, you know, your business going forward? My, you know what? My current team, mm -hmm. my current team has been with me for almost five years. Those people that, that, that invested and in even, well, Sheila's my cousin. She's a high military. She's my board member. Okay. They've been around, they've been around me for a long time. People I trust. 
You know, when I started Black Mama Vodka, before I even opened up my distillery, you know, so the people who've been around me, when I talked to them, they were the, they were, they were the first actual investors. Even my lawyer, she's white, she's Jewish, she invested. They've been around and I've been doing business with them, have been around me for years. So there's always people that are close, close to you. you right, but you see, right, but you see these people who are also investing mm -hmm. as well? Those are, a lot of those people are my customers. I have 28,000 customers from just the liquor. Yeah. The team was just started. This is not, listen, this is not a new game for me. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? This is not a new game. I can go and open a Black Mama Teas and Cafe on my own. I can't. I don't have time to do it. I can do it. But because I import, we manufacture, I distribute already to 28,000 yeah. customers. It only makes sense now to have the retail because I own the blockchain. Don't yeah. you see? I closed yeah. that loop. Yeah. It's the same as Amazon having Amazon stores and Microsoft got Microsoft stores. Who was it? Apple now got Apple stores. They started first with their products, right? Yeah. And then it went out to their customers. But then their customers want more. My customers always want more. I don't know what they want from me, blood. But they always <laughs> want more. <laughs> and every time I put something out, my customers, my customers are the first ones that are there. I even test products with my customers. I had a product that I was putting out like a, a, a peppermint vodka and I let my customers, you know, first we, before we do anything, we have a focus group. But I let my customers be a focus group. And I gotta love our black people, boy, I tell you. Some of our black people, some of my customers are something else. Somebody came to me, called, actually called the office. JoJo answered, just like, yeah. She said, um, tell Vanessa, do not put this product on the market. <laughs> Girl, no, that is not going to happen. That's exactly how she said it. But then I got a couple of other people that said, mm -mm, no, don't do that. So I saw, you know, I listened to my customers. I said, well, if I send to 25 people mm. and 15 of them said no, then was not a product. You yeah. got to change the product. You know how much money I save right there? Your customers who are loyal to you and you're loyal to them. They're going to tell you the truth of what works. The majority, yeah. the majority, you know, will tell you the truth on, 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 on your product. Yeah. And that's how that has always, that's how it's worked for me. Those people that you see that's there, they've been with me. I got Daryl who was there. Daryl, Daryl was there when we was, I didn't even have the vodka yet. Daryl was there when I started, we was just doing the logo, drinking. At a spade game. <laughs> it came up with Black Mama Vodka. That's it was how you the logo, right? From the spade game. <laughs> I knew it. <laughs> and a friend of ours, because we always play these spade games. So a friend of ours, he was basically something, God knows what. And he's the one that said his name is Glennis from Chicago. Yo, you need to put the birds upside down. We was drunk as hell. <laughs> upside down so when they turn it upside down then we're like oh that's so dope <laughs> we end up doing that <laughs> and it was six of us yeah. we always talking about like my friend amina she said i can't believe i see your product and i remember that morning when we was playing stage coming yeah. up with it you know and they can attest to it and daryl he was there from day one. Daryl, have, I have 30 employees with the liquor, but whatever I do, they do too. You know, they, you know, some of them are going to be staying with the trans stain here, but then the ones that I put there are going to be involved with Black Mama Teas and cafes to make sure that it transitioned very well to what we need it to be. You know, I'm going to hire other people. For example, there's going to be a franchise a franchise manager, I have to. Voice access. Who, who, who's that? <laughs> <laughs> That's, <good. laughs> That's me. That's, me. <laughs> That's my computer. <laughs> oh, who are you? Look. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so some of us, you know, I'm going to have a franchise manager. As the company scales, then I'm going to 
look for additional people, but I want to look for people. I would ultimately like to have people who are investors. Investors, yeah. Do you know what I mean? I don't want people coming in and trying to take money. For, I can't stand that. You know, I get really, really um, weary, whereas people see it as a paycheck. One of the things I learned from Jack Ma, I went to Jack Ma who owns Alibaba. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He was doing a speaking engagement. He spoke, spoke very briefly. And he said something that was so true. If somebody's coming to your company that just want to get a check, then they're, they're not in the best interest of the company. No matter what their skill level is. Mm -hmm. If somebody who's invested whether it's time and money, they have a full investment in the terms of the company itself, and they're going to make sure that they see it moving forward. You feel me? Yeah. I've got a quick question actually there, Vanessa, on just that, just while we're talking about um, vodka. Why, why vodka? Like, because, you know, it's kind of, reading what you're saying on the we funder and um was it was it your grandmother used to make wine and and what have you so then why vodka i, I just i just i'm quite interested in even understanding the whole process <laughs> yeah i'm a drinker as well <laughs> but i mean well, i'm gonna be i'm gonna be truthful i used to i'm a retired structural engineer i'm a retired engineer I did civil engineering, structural engineering in college. My husband's a mechanical engineer. My sons, my two, one son is doing electrical engineering in California, and the other son is doing computer science engineering. I'm trying to get my daughter to do, you know, chemistry. She wants to do graphic design, but she's learning about, she said yesterday she learned about alcohol. She's 16 in class. And she's like, oh, wow, I already know this because my mom showed, you know, I show them around here, around the facility. <laughs> Yeah. You know, so I said, oh, you might be a chemist. That would be great because then we can, you know, <laughs> I should, I like but listen, I used to make liquor right on the stove on a college campus 31 years ago. <laughs> oh, okay. Okay. When you're an engineer, you get so bored. So look, I was trying to make some money. And what's the fastest thing to do? You know, go to the store. You know, all, I kid you not, it was funny because my husband's on the basketball team. And we try to have these you know, parties. And you can do this today. You couldn't do drink liquor on campus. You couldn't do that. You know, even though they tried, but you couldn't do the crazy stuff. Well, we all chipped in. It must have been 25 of us. And we all chipped money in. And this will tell you college students, we had like $5.23 <laughs> between 25 people. <laughs> Went to the supermarket, got some macaroni. Back then, you know, you have macaroni, you got the sugar, you get a nice thing of sugar, get some rice. I even used some grass clippings on the campus because I needed to get a good enough pot. <laughs> <laughs> you got to print. Now, you West Indian, so you know, you, you West Indian, you have West Indian heritage. Yeah, you, know yeah. the, you know, pressure cooker? You know, you got yeah. a pressure cooker, right? Yeah. You're, you're, you're going to make a pepper pot or make it cook <laughs> rice, right, with the pressure cooker? <laughs> Yeah, bore a hole on the top of that pressure cooker, all right? <laughs> bore a hole on the top of that, siphon, siphon a tube to the top of that, run the tube down to a bucket, put all that stuff in there, let it get to a certain temperature on the pressure cooker, you're going to get condensation. That's how you make liquor. <laughs> <laughs> That's how you make a neutral grain spirit, which is very easy, you know, but... Make sure you throw away the first 10% because that's ethanol. You don't want to drink that. <laughs> well, you didn't know that when you was in college, right? <laughs> no, I'm, listen, I'm an engineer. I knew that in college because I was taking the first, which was so crazy. I was taking that percentage and I was, didn't know where to throw it. I didn't want to throw it down. I didn't want to throw it down the, um, down the sink because then that'll mess your pipes up, right? So... Yeah. I would just take it and throw it out the campus, when, throw it out the window. We lived on the fifth floor. <laughs> so I would just, <laughs> just throw it out the window. And every time, yeah, every time, you know, I, I would make, it was like $2 a cup. 
I throw it out the window. Do you know the end of the semester, I never even noticed it. The whole side of the building was faded. And all of the shrubbery and the, and the grass and everything was all dead. And you can see maintenance looking like, what happened? <laughs> I'm like, oh my God, I got to move from that apartment. <laughs> they couldn't figure out what was going on. They killed all the shrubbery. They had a fade line on the side of the building. <laughs> which, you know, which, which I suppose, which, which is kind of follows onto a, a point that I wanted to talk to you about. Because, again, reading about, um, you know, all of these chemicals that are in, you know, all of these liquors that we, we're drinking, whether it's, you know, whiskey yeah. or whatever. So, and you're, eliminating all of these chemicals out or at least reducing it what i else? have no chemicals i have yeah. no chemicals in it other than electric none whatsoever mm -hmm. but go ahead ask your question yeah so so how do you do that so what would be the process that you got i mean i i don't know process so you can go copy my process what do you no. think it's a training class <laughs> <laughs> I, I definitely have go a, I definitely go I'm ask not. Greg Goose. Hold on, go ask Greg Goose how they process. This is all trade secrets. What are you crazy? <laughs> no, but I mean I, I'm I'm kind of for me it's kind of like I remember going to um the Caribbean going to St. Vincent and yeah. we used to go to a place called Sunset and Sunset was uh, the the dis the distillery for the, the rum, the the strong rum. Right, yeah. Rum and is the, made very differently than 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 distill spirits, you know that, right? Okay, I, no, I, I don't know, but I, I, what I did know is when you got it, when you went to the distillery, you could go there with a bucket and they'll fill up the bucket and it will be cheaper, but whatever you got out of the bucket, it will blow your head off. <laughs> you yeah, it always, yeah, it'll always, because it comes, because it's, when it comes out, it's 190 proof, you gotta proof, it. it's, it's raw material, it's yeah. raw, you gotta proof it down. And you gotta proof it down and make it palatable for people to consume. So when you're getting it, it's really just a raw product. Just like if you you think how you make it when you make a dish. When you buy chicken, you're not getting it cooked, right? You gotta cook it, you gotta season it, you gotta yeah. do all of that, stick it in the oven to and have flavor to it, right? Mm -hmm. It's but you got the raw chicken. Yeah. So it's the same thing. You get, you know, when you get that product, it's 190 proof it's you can never that'll kill you <laughs> you gotta proof it down now you gotta have people add chemicals to add flavoring to it i do an infusion now if you have you know anything like for example i make my vodka you know like my chai teas all the tea ones from tea leaf that's how i ended up with black mama teas i was making vodka i have a chai tea vodka green tea vodka um, pomegranate tea vodka. I got a sour sop. You got a sour sop as well? I got a sour sop tea vodka. Where's my sour? I don't even know if I, let me see, let me see if I have any <laughs> I make a, the only, all the distilleries are trying to reach out to me to find out what is sour sop. Not many people, the, the thing is, I, I, I mean. The tea is big as well, man, because that's super healthy for you as well. Yeah. This my sour sop vodka. Right here. Okay. Black Mama. Which is kind of like an aphrodisiac too. So watch out when you're drinking it. You better have somebody with you. <laughs> <laughs> you better be ready. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I feel a lot. I can't keep sour sour vodka in like in New especially in New York. Because Latino people know it as Guanabana. Yeah. And, yeah. and you know, and then you had the West Indian people that know sour sour. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. I can't, I can't even keep, keep that on the shelves. They're constantly calling, constantly. And then you got places like in California where you have a lot of Central American people or Filipinos. They love, when they hear that it's, you know, um, sour sour, and then also Mexicans know it as chirmoya. They they go crazy over it, mm. you know. And it's you know it's a good blend, and I blend that with tea just as well. So, so initially so when I started, I didn't start out with doing 
If you'd have asked me this five years ago if I'd have had Black Mama Teas and Cafes or even the Agave or Black Mama Mixes, I would have told you no. But it's, part, yeah, because it's, it's, that's what you call growing and evolving. As a company, you must always, if you want to grow to one of these big companies, you got to evolve. Why do you think Amazon is doing what they're doing? What, you know, and, and you think about it. Apple, when Apple started, who would have thought they would have had a phone? When he was thinking about having a phone, they would say, oh, that's crazy. It's not crazy anymore when it's done. Hmm. But look at the expansion. Apple's market cap, they're, they're going to be the first publicly traded company to hit the market cap of a trillion dollars. They said that today. You couldn't even buy them, what, 20 years ago? 22 years, 21 years ago, when I owned Apple stock. They couldn't even sell the doggone Macintosh computer. <laughs> they were doing terrible. <laughs> I was going to their, their shareholder conferences right there in Anaheim, California. I'm like, I'm going to get rid of this damn stock. And you know, I got rid of the stock and I got rid of the doggone Macintosh computer because it wasn't moving anywhere. Mm -hmm. yeah. But my AOL stock, I kept for the last 22 years. I ain't going to lie about that. That's been good. <laughs> <laughs> and I and then you know and and you you get that at an early age I'm about long so that's how I got into the tea game yeah. it wasn't just that I woke up and said I'm gonna do tea I'm making vodka with it yeah. and so I was left with all these tea leaves and I said all right I'm gonna start black mama black mama tea <laughs> 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 So one thing, one thing then, you know, with, um, you, you're into crypto, aren't you? Yeah, Bitcoin. Okay. So would you at some point, get, you're part of the uh, Wakanda group, would you, would you start accepting Garvey's as... Yeah, a, we're talking about that now. Somebody yeah. asked me that question earlier. But I told Lamar, he's got to get, <clears throat> like I said to him the other day, you got to get, I want him to take, I'll help him take it public. I said that. Let me list first. Let me, let me list first, because you need somebody to list and get there first. Yeah. Because I plan to bring other people onto the exchange and take them public. Yeah. I also want to, to, I want to be on the, on the FTSE. I want to be on the London exchange. We're going to have to definitely talk about that too, because mm -hmm. you guys, y'all invest, y'all, you guys are going to have to help us get on that exchange too. All right. Because I want to make sure that happens. But yeah, I'll accept the Garvey's at a certain time. Right now, I can't do it because I'm in a regulated securities yeah. under the SEC. You know, and the last thing you want, which I told him yesterday, just yesterday, and you don't have to do an ICO. He was like, you don't want to do an ICO. Yeah, but you know what? At some point in time, you're going to have to list it as a, with the SEC as a utility. Mm -hmm. You can do that as a utility. Because they're cracking down. It's either going to be you have to do an ICO or since we're all using it within a group, do it as a utility. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, that way you don't have a problem later on with compliance. Because yeah. that's, the, that's the only issue. That's why yeah. what me selling these shares, I said, listen, let's just do it the right way because I don't want nobody to come say nothing to me. Let's just make sure that it's regulated. It's the SEC knows what's going on and everything is there. So nobody can say nothing. <laughs> and I'm using WeFunder. Then when I do the IPO, I'm going to use Start Engine. WeFunder was one of the companies that was there to sign into Congress with the changing of the law. Okay. And so is Start Engine. Start Engine is starting a, a, a secondary market. So those who want to um, sell, their shares, let's say they have their shares for that's from a crowdfunding equity regulation. When you go on the start engine now, people who might want to sell their black mama shares, T, you know, T, their shares from the CF, they'll be able to do that. Start engine just changed the game. They're changing the market and changing the game here right in front of our eyes. And people are not up on it. Mm. We too, buddy, too much into, you know, looking at what celebrity, I have no damn time for that. We're so busy finding, trying to see what celebrity is doing, what basketball player is doing. We're not even seeing what's really going on in front of us. That's why I've been making these moves that I'm making, and I own my own stuff. Mm -hmm. 
because everybody else is in everybody else's face. Nobody's looking at me. We need to move, make moves within our community, within the black community, with us, for our children. We need to do that into industries that we're not in. Everybody's in the hair and makeup and entertainment and all. That's saturated. That's old news. Why is it that black people should always be into that industry? We should be in technology. We should be in manufacturing. Now it's with this cannabis. We should be growers. I just spoke to a bunch of Wakoindas today. When you get a chance, go on to the Wakoinda mm -hmm. um, and look in the group. I did a, a live earlier. Okay. In reference to what industries are going to be, what industries are available right now for jobs and for business in the cannabis industry. You know, UK and, and um, Canada are so far ahead as far as the hemp and the cannabis industry is. The US is so far behind. So we're just really, you know, the US, I'm going to say, is just getting into to the cannabis and they're still kind of fine, but they're realizing that they need to make it federally legal. Because if they don't, they're going to go down the damn tubes. Period. Mm -hmm. So is it, is, it just, is it just a couple of the states that have um, made it all uh, legal? Or is it... Is it no, right a couple of, couple of states is about seven, maybe six or seven states are recreational. Okay. And then maybe another 12 are medicinal. But oh. even when it's medicinal, there's so many restrictions. Okay. It needs to be recreational across the board. London is what? Recreational? What is London? Whoa, it's a little bit different here. It's um yeah. It's not it's not illegal to use recreationally in your own home. You can't use it in public, but you are not allowed to to sell it. So it, it, so how you selling it? Yeah, it's, a, it's, it's, it's contradictory. It's not so clear cut over here. It's not like, for example, in the Netherlands, where it's legal recreationally and you can have you know, your weed shops and stuff and, and buy it and open and sell and then smoke it in public and things like that. It's, it is a little bit tighter over here from, from the... Uh, it's the illegal, camp. right? I mean, that's the bottom line. It's a, it's a, it's a class B drug. It, so, is, it is not illegal for recreational use. Yeah. So, okay. so what? Absolutely. But that, how, how do you, how do you define that then? Yeah. 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 So it has to be used. <laughs> in, like I said, the catch point is to say you, it's, it's legal to use in your home, but it's illegal to buy it. So it's so, you know, so yeah. So, so where do you illegal. get it? Yeah. So then that's illegal. How yeah. do you get? It? There we go, Vanessa. You got it right. That's it. <laughs> so, so how are you supposed to get it? You grow it yourself? Is it legal to grow? You can, no, no. You can grow it yourself. Uh, but it's mm -hmm. people, like if, if people have grown it on a mass scale, that's illegal too. That's illegal, yeah. What do you mean mass scale then? You know, to grow the thing, you can't kind of just say, okay, just grow 12 inches of it for me. Yes, the damn thing grows, right? <laughs> yeah, but, but, you, but you can. You, you, you can... Um, I mean, I'm not an expert. Yeah. Right? I'm, I'm not trying to act like I know all the, all the rules and stuff. No, no, but, no, 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 no. But it's good to get the information. Yeah, but, if you, if, so if you, but if it's like, if, if you're growing it with the intent to supply. So if yeah, you, exactly. You know, they've got these helicopters that are flying around most of the time. And then they, heat they've, heat they've sensors, got... Heat sensors, all that yeah, kind of stuff. They've got the heat sensors. So if they see in a house that has X amount of heat that's shoving, coming out from the, the, the roof or the loft, they're probably going to say, actually... That's going to be a weed house, yeah. and that's probably that's going to get. Yeah, that's that's horrible. Horrible. because you know why? And I own stock. GW Pharma is killing the game over there. Yeah, the the pharma comp they they do it because the pharma com companies are trying to kind of get a foothold in that market as they're looking to turn it legal, so that once they turn it legal, all the money is going to go to them and not the regular guy on the street. Yeah, yeah, because I commissioned them to do my um to do my strand for me, you know? So one of my strands. Mm -hmm. But you know it's legal to import the CBD here, but you can't grow it here. Okay. <laughs> and it's legal to sell just the CBD because you know the CBD doesn't have the THC and it has you know, very, very little, right? Mm -hmm. But being that the hemp is 
still in a class, you know, the class one, which they're trying to remove right now. But the CBD is legal in all 50 states. But you can't grow it here, but it's legal to import industrial hemp. So backwards. Mm. So GW Pharma, which is a UK company, <laughs> listed, listed on New York Stock, NASDAQ, I think, and listed on FTSE, I believe. They have a ton of marijuana in the UK. And they got a patent. They got a patent on their bud. The same thing I'm going to do. I follow it. When they move, I move. This is what we as people need to do. When they make a move, I'm making a move. I'm not waiting to the, to the end. You find out what they're doing. Now, how the heck is it illegal? It's illegal here, right? If it's illegal here, how is it that they got the patent, the U.S. Patent Office to give them a patent on a illegal substance. <laughs> tell me. Uh, I, I, I'm not sure, but I tell you what also, it wouldn't surprise me if all of their um, growing farms are outside of the UK. It is. Yeah. But that's fun. Look. That's fine. I love that. Because then that allows us to do business with them. Because yeah. then they protect. You know, that's, that's the thing. I can get my hemp seeds through them. I can get do all of that. I'm going to put a patent on my butt. Same thing, because you know what they're planning to do? They just put in for, they put in for the FDA marijuana as a FDA, to get FDA approval. They're getting it. They're getting it. Nobody else, my life, I have a sense here. Nobody else can get marijuana. They put it in for epilepsy, maybe like two weeks ago. Hmm. They're going to get the FDA approval for it, wow. for marijuana, hmm. in, a, in, a, in a country where it's illegal. <laughs> so they set the, pre I want them to set the precedent, but we need to be ahead of the ball. We need to be in tow with them. Okay, that's what they're giving. You gave it to them. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do the same thing. Mm -hmm. That's all it is. Mm. You know, they're using the laws and the compliances. We got to do this. It, it applies to us too. Yeah. It does. Just that people don't take the time to do it. And if you're going to have a business that's going to grow, and especially where that industry is going, we got to be ready. You gotta be ready. You know, I got my, I got fingerprinted for my growers license in California. So I'm gonna build a facility. I have, you know, I have an office in California. I have, you know, my distillery. My partner's with a distillery in Oregon. So Oregon is recreational. And you know who's managing the license? The, the Oregon Liquor, Liquor Control Board. <laughs> I see you managing it. Yeah, they're managing it. They're managing the licenses for, for cannabis, the liquor board. Same thing in California, the same people. That's, they all in bed with each other. I can't change nothing. I don't plan to change anything because if you fight to change, what's, nothing's gonna happen. So you just get involved with the change and make it advantageous for you and everybody else around you. If you can't beat them, join them, right? What? <laughs> you can say that again. <laughs> <laughs> this is one of my tea machines here. I can't show everything because I paid $75,000 for this machine. <laughs> yeah, this, this machine bags it up and do everything that I need it done. That pushes out like 3,000 bags, well, three to 5,000, on the low end, 3,000 bags an hour, 5,000 bags an hour. Oh, yeah. Huh? I said bloody hell. Yeah, he was impressed. <laughs> <laughs> these are my Gave machines right here. I had these, these are, these are volumetrics, you know, so they're, they're filled with pistons. Because you know the the lick, you know the viscosity of the agave is so thick, so this machine 
you know, I had this custom design just as well. And then this is my tea area. You know, we have everything back. You know, we have a curtain wall here because you can see they were here last night. So this is where we cut and sit. This is where we have to keep everything separate because you'll have, last night I had tea all in my hair. We was making a new blend of CBD teas for a customer for distribution. And so I'll have, you know, you come out and you got tea all over your face, your nose, because <laughs> the dust, you have to have a, a, um, a air purifier over there, you know, because that'll really mess up your, your that can mess up your respiratory system. <laughs> I swear it's like cocaine, you know, something flies everywhere. You know, I came home, my husband said, you smell like tea. I said, thank God for that. That means I'm busy. <laughs> <laughs> so what then, Vanessa, does it mean that if we're, we, we're ever in, uh, in New York, we're going to be able to come and see you and then, and then you'll be able to kind of give us a bit of a tour? I mean, I've never even been to America. The closest I've been is Canada. But... Uh yeah, but you got to make an appointment and it can't be a whole bunch of people. But yeah, yeah, you can make an appointment because this is a licensed facility. Yeah. And it's DA registered. So having regular people in and not sanitary is yeah. not sanitary for us. But also, you guys don't have a liquor license. <laughs> <laughs> but I, you know, I could, you know, just in case I'm getting an inspection, you know, but yeah, that's, that's not a problem. You just have to okay. make an appointment. You know, like, yeah. so it can't be like 20 people coming in because it's going to be like, no. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there, won't be any, there won't be anything like that. I'll make sure my right. kids aren't there because I will smash the place up. my license now because of black folks. We're not doing that. <laughs> I got too much money involved. <laughs> no, but it's all good. It's all good. Any questions? So the, the deadline for your, okay, for the for the next the next phase. So you're, you, is it, it's 15 million you're looking to... No. No, valuation of the company, right? Free money valuation of the company is 15 okay. million. That's okay. my money. Okay. So That's my money. <laughs> so the, the so the cut off from the investor point from now, was it the 15th of June? June 15th. Okay. June 15th. Okay. I, I the SEC, I only got one extension and I agree with them. So whatever is there, whoever's there, that's it. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Have you have you got any kind of estimate in mind right now for uh, when you're planning to list? I know there's a lot of things that are going to go on in in between and the things you have to get ready. But have you got an idea? Let me, like, let me put it. Let me put it this way, because legally I can't tell you that I'm going to list at a specific date, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. But the goal to list is 2019. Okay. Okay, and that way the company will have two years in because I incorporated this new company last year. Mm -hmm. This extension of this company brand to have a clean slate. That way you have clean slate with nothing to impede on it being listed. Mm -hmm. And that way this year, okay, we'll close, we'll close this June 15th will apply for our Reg A plus July. I'm, t I'm hoping they apply for it by June 16th, but they can't because they have to close out and make sure that all the um, investors who are listed, the transfer agent has to get, they have to send the information to the SEC and then we apply for our Reg A plus, which will probably be in July. Mm -hmm. So July, August, September, October, November, it takes four months for the SEC, 120 days for the SEC to approve that. So then I'm hoping to start the IPO, providing that we get um, qualified by the SEC by December. Okay. And then we got to do like, you know, then, we, then it's a little longer raise because now you got, now you got um, investment companies that are in, venture capitalists, all these other people that come in, mm -hmm. self-directed IRA, you know, but for those who came in and see Brown, which was my goal, it'll be a high evaluation at IPO Brown. And because then that's when I'm not doing a, a series A, a series B, I'm not doing all that. Don't need to do that. Yeah. It's, you know, it's, it's, not, it's not rocket science having a, a, a 
a cafe. <laughs> A cafe with liquor and vegan products and and herbs and you know and oh, marijuana, sure. right? Yeah. <laughs> I don't want to say marijuana. CBD. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, so, what, what is your plan right now for the 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 UK arm of it? How have you incorporated that? How have you built out in terms of staff, or is it just sitting down? sitting there ready for you to act at some point and is that something that we could help you with you know no, you can help me with that the yeah. key is right now closing this and building that first location uh-huh because if i don't build that first location we can't have a uk nothing no sure, sure we, yeah. can't have a UK, we can't have a trinidad we can't mm -hmm. have nothing yeah. <laughs> hmm. because that's going to set the standards especially yeah. since i have ikea involved you know Let's build these first locations. Get I need to just build this first location, get everything on the shelf. Yeah. Meantime, what I need you guys to do, since you guys are going to be investors, I want you guys to start looking at what it is that I need to do in the UK. Mm -hmm. I got to incorporate it, do another L LTD. I'm, I'm going to do another LTD. I'm going to do another limited company anyway, under Black Mama Teas and Cafe. Mm -hmm. I have to do that anyway. You know, I have an accountant there and I have a lawyer. So I'll set, set that up because the franchising and the laws are very different. Yeah, yeah. You know, so, and, and that's the thing. I don't think it's harder. Um, it's easier in other countries other than the, other than in the U.S. Mm -hmm. Because the SEC also, the SEC and the Attorney General also um, has jurisdiction over the franchises over here. Okay, but, not, but not, no, not elsewhere. Okay. Mm -mm. It would be the UK that has the jurisdiction over the franchises. Yeah, so yeah. if you guys can definitely look that up and send that to me, because all it is is going to be, I'll set up another LT, um, another limited company under that company name, knowing that we can have a franchising or even, hey, we can open up a location, a corporate location out there, because mm -hmm. you guys are out there and you guys find the locations. I'm with that. Okay. You know, because then that'll be, because I want to scale. That's the mm -hmm. thing. I want to scale. You know, and having a location, which is kind of better with a franchisee, because I have, we have people who have products. I'm using Black-owned companies that have products here who don't have the chance to get into to bigger companies. Mm -hmm. They have phenomenal products. I got this guy's product here. Oh my gosh. He makes, wait till you see this. Cooked by Cope. This is called Ginger Teas. Ginger Teas. It's ginger, turmeric, sweet carrot, lemon. Black guy. That sounds good. Oh my God. It's organic, non GMO all healthy products. You can use it for drinks. I use the seasoning on everything. He's a brother and he's making this packaging is so, so good. He has, this is, this is on an investor's packaging. He has, um, what he has? He has the rosemary, bell pepper. He has one that's called me, myself and lime, bell of balls. These, his seasoning should be on the shelves of William Sonoma. And he can't even get in there. It's like, it's, sometimes to me, it just seems like the product is so great. Why wouldn't they allow a great product to come in? Mm -hmm. Are they doing it because they don't want to do it? Or are they doing it because he's black? I don't know. I, it's sometimes just these things, it's like, I'm wondering what, what is going on in the head, in their head? Because how do you not, these are great products. And that's, and that's the thing. A lot of people have great products, great packaging. This is threesome chocolate. You ain't having a threesome while eating the chocolate. Let me just make that clear. <laughs> <laughs> that's the We're company, not company that you spoke about in the movie, right? <laughs> they use three different sets of chocolate. <laughs> <laughs> A dark chocolate, a white chocolate, and a milk chocolate. 
But this is a, a black couple. He is a chocolatier. His family's from the West Indies. He makes these by, oh my God, he got a jerk chocolate. He got a, Ooh. what? He's got a chocolate. You look up threesome chocolate, and we're going to have some of them threesome chocolates right inside the window there. He's got a, a jerk chocolate that is amazing. What? And then he's got a chocolate with, it's like a truffles with black mama vodka in it. He also has a black mama vodka. He has a chocolate dip that's called black mama vodka so people can dip their strawberries in there. He's got a, he's got all these different types of truffles of tr that is just so amazing. Never even taste anything like it. This brother and this sister. And you know what the hardest thing for them? They out there grinding the streets, going to all these places, have their website. They just came up with a couple of um, packages for Mother's Day. They can't even get into a regular store. You know why? Because you got these big companies that block everybody. Mm -hmm. so there's no distribution channel for people to see their product. Mm -hmm. That's a problem to me. You know, I got my vodka in, you know, in 26 states, probably more now, overseas. I'm doing that. But I have a customer base. 28,000 customers is not like, it's not a lot of customers, right? <laughs> Enough. <laughs> could always take but, more though. Huh? I said it's enough, but can always take more. Yes, but I'm <laughs> always, listen, we stay busy and I keep my people employed, which is great. Mm -hmm. But for them to have, you know, people want to have that type of access. It took me five years to, to have those types of customers that stay with me and then have the customers at the liquor store and I have that, which is great. But what I'm seeing in this day and age, these big companies, they just, to get into a supermarket, and I got into Albertson supermarkets because I knew Albertson, the, the manager at Albertson, and they have a DSD program, which is you bring the product to their store, they cut you a check right on the spot, and then they put it up on that, on the, at that store. But you have to go to each and every single store. That's when it's a DSD. That's when it's a direct distribution versus having to go to, because that's decentralized. If you have to go to a centralized location where you move everything to their, to their distribution center, that means you got to talk to one buyer, one person, and let them decide for the whole chain. For the whole lot, yeah. Yeah, forget that. Mm. So that blocks people. How many black-owned products do you see on the shelf? You tell me, other than Patti LaBelle. <laughs> <laughs> so that's why I said, you know what? I'm going to do this. And who's with it is with it. Whoever's not with it, that's their damn own business. Mm -hmm. You have the question? <laughs> no, 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 that's fair enough. Um, but so I'm going to want, if you guys invest, listen, y'all going to have some work to do. <laughs> Because y'all might have to handle the UK division. <laughs> That's what I'm going to explain to y'all. Y'all going to be, you're going to be investors, shareholders. We're going to make, I'm telling you, we're going to make this move. We're trying to get it. <laughs> <laughs> Put your money up. <laughs> I hear you, that is clear. Uh, well, look, Vanessa, I, I haven't got any questions. I don't know whether anyone else has got any questions on, on that. Okay, that's good. Now, who, where's the other two? I see, I saw the other guy that looked like he high. Where's the other one? I saw the other. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so, so there's, there's, like that, there's Nana. Nana that's there. Um, who? Who's waving. Can you see Nana waving? No, you got to move, you got to move the camera to him. Oh, hold on, hold on, hold on. Can you? Can you see Nana? No. No, you can't see Nana. Oh, you you might have to uh, flip screens. Ah, uh, if you're on your phone, you might have to flip screens because you you won't see it all on one screen. Hold up! Oh, hey. oh! Hey, that's Nana. That's cool. <laughs> <laughs> and then you 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 just you talked to Chris earlier, just when we talked about the um the weed 
the weed situation in the, yeah. in the UK. <laughs> so right. I'm going to want you guys to look that up, even the CBD. Now, CBD has got to be legal in, in the UK. There's, there's, a, there's, there's a big push now. CBD is legal. It's used for medicine, medicinal purposes. There, there's a lot of places opening up selling uh, CBD oils and all those kind of things. Um, and that's something that uh, I, I know some people are interested in doing. So uh, I can definitely look into some more information and get that to you. And yeah. Way, I'm, I'm, I'm double O sizzle, but I'm also known as, as Michael. So uh, that's my real name. Oh, okay. Because I got a, um, uh, who is this? Apple Happy Family. What's your name? What's your name, boo? <laughs> That's Nana. He's what? on mute. You're on mute, Nana. Oh, let, let me unmute. I'll unmute. I'll unmute. Yeah, okay. what happened, Nana? I'm the the surname. That's why. Oh, that's your surname? Yeah, the surname is Happy Asia Family. But my name is Nana. You can call me Nana. That's the first name. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> Where are you from? Where are you from? I'm from Ghana, West Africa. That's what's up. Yeah. Oh, you? I just got some Senegal Senegal tea. Uh, some tea from Senegal. All right. I mean, Senegal is far from Ghana anyway. <laughs> <laughs> I just got some to test out that I'm gonna test. Oh, I see. So, huh? Are, are you, do you know, Vesa, are you, are you always looking for um, uh, products from, from different countries to test out? So if there was teas that were coming from, yeah, from Ghana, for instance. Yeah, even now, the, one of the things I definitely do, oh, I shoot, you just reminded me. I want to get some um, coffee. I've ta been talking to these guys in South Africa. Um, I'd like to have coffee grown in, in Africa work with a co-op, let it be our own blend. Right. Now we have to figure out, yeah, it'll be a, on, on, our own Black Mama coffee. Mm. That would be the only source. Mm -hmm. Because when you bring it in and it's just exclusive, then you can put a high price to it. <laughs> yeah. mm -hmm. Right? So you can put a high price to it. I'm also testing out making Okay. Well, these are my tea bags. Okay. I'm testing out coffee. In tea bags? In tea bags. Mm -hmm. I'm making a bigger bag so people can have individual coffee. We're so oh, 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 oh. Have individual coffee. We're testing it. So oh, I've got oh, oh, oh. organic coffee. Okay. Found I have to grind it down to a French, like a French press type of ground. And then we're putting it in here, and then I'm having people test it out to see how it is. Can you imagine have an individual bag of coffee? <laughs> yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. I don't know why nobody's done that. <clears throat> you know, you just yeah. put it in. I guess it's being done, but it's not. It's not everybody's doing this, this cold brew, you know, French press. Everybody's doing that. I it just, see, that's, that's the problem with me as an engineer. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, put the, and actually my daughter said, you should put coffee in there. And I said, okay. And because I don't drink coffee, but she does. But the other thing is now the roasting. That's this, that big, I don't know if you know that in, in, in the U.S., that Starbucks have to put a cancer warning on their coffee cups. You know cancer, about that? Cancer no? warning. Cancer warning. Yeah. On the yeah, from the criminalized. The criminalized, they found out that the cough, the, the roasting process, which creates a criminalized, which is, uh, causes cancer. So they want it on, so the judge maybe a couple of weeks ago, maybe a month ago, mm -hmm. that the Starbucks has got to put a cancer warning on their, like a surgeon general on their, their cups. And I'm like, I'm so glad I got tea. Because everybody's all looking into <sighs> coffee. <laughs> yeah. That's massive. So, are you looking at a uh, a way to produce this exclusive black black mama coffee that uh, is isn't roasted in such a way where it produces that chemical? To not roast it exactly. Okay. If, if I can, if we can figure out without ha having a coffee, because the coffee is a is a green, 
it's a green, um, it's green. Yeah. And when you roast it, that's how you get the, um, wow. the, the dark roast, the light roast. The darker the roast, the less acrylamide that's in there. The lighter roast that's all in there. So the, the darker with, but it's the same thing as far as I'm concerned, like a carcinogen. Yeah. <clears throat> because you're, you're burning it. That's what you, you're charring it when you're roasting it. So if there is a way, unless we come up with a way, whereas I use the green coffee bean, and we start, in it, uh, start a, a, new, a new way of drinking, an alternative way hmm. of drinking coffee, and you mark it where that it's not being roasted, no chemicals, no roasting, organic. Oh, you know, people voice love, access has been canceled. People love that. I think that's Chris again. It is. So what do you think? Yeah, I think it's going to be interesting if you can get that process down. Is that what you're working with the, the guys in South Africa? I just need them to grow. Okay. But they take it too long. <laughs> They're going to grow and then you're, you're going to figure out the rest, huh? <laughs> I'm an engineer. <laughs> <laughs> they take it too long. But I'm going to see her. I'm going to, the woman that I get, she does my hair. So her family has, you know, she goes, this is, what is this? This one is called RAT, R-A-T-T. -T. I'm going to try it. Because people like different types of teas, and they mm -hmm. give different type of flavoring. You know, I'm even looking into blending coffee and tea together in a package. All this stuff we got to test. Mm -hmm. You know, do it as a hybrid. Nobody's doing, you got to come up. These millennials, they love new stuff. They love new stuff. <laughs> You come up with new stuff, they're all on it. And if it's organic and it's natural, we're not back in the days, <clears throat> 50 years ago with our parents' stuff. People don't want processed stuff. If you're finding a way to make it all natural, they want it. Yeah. They're pay and they're paying for it. They are. So, if my man from Ghana, if you can find a, a nice co-op to get some coffee, <laughs> Good price, but it's not be exclusive. It's got to be exclusive. They can't tell nobody. We'll buy everything up that they got, but it's got to be exclusive. Right. Okay, so that's gonna be my job. Good assignment that we can do. Yeah, sure. Oh, but you gotta invest first. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> 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 you want to invest first, all right? Yeah, of course. Yeah, you too. <laughs> oh, that is. Okay. Oh, and then I'm going to hold up. And then I'm going to want the three y'all or four y'all set up a distribution company. Set up a distribution company in the UK. Mm -hmm. Get a liquor license. So I could pull the liquor through y'all. Y'all get paid, and then you sell to the to the rest of the Black Mama Teas and cafes or other companies. Well, that doesn't sound that too bad. Yeah, I actually already uh, have kind of partnered with somebody who's got a liquor license and was thinking about apply, uh, applying for my own one. So that's kind of been on my radar. But trust me, I've got so many things on my radar, and you know, I still got to get to it. But um, it, it, it was we, we were looking into that already anyway. OK. Because I can't, what I'm doing is with other small, you know, I contract manufacturing here. Mm -hmm. I'm looking at the big, smaller brands in the liquor industry and even in the beverage. Um, oh. You still there? And so I get money from the US to market products overseas. Okay. They won't use them. They won't give me the money to market here. But up to three hundred twenty thousand dollars a year, the U.S. gives me money to market. When I export my product, mm -hmm. I can do like events or whatever commercials, or the distributor pay for printing, all of that stuff. The U.S. gives me back money for that. Okay. Yeah, that sounds interesting. 
It's not interesting, it's real. <laughs> I believe you. Trust me, I believe you. All right. All right, you know, guys. Yeah, Nessa, right. Nessa, thank you very much. I'm, we've got there's so much information that's flowing. Um, I've been trying to jot stuff down. I'm so glad that I've managed got it recorded because I'm gonna have to watch this back. <laughs> you know, yeah. uh, I see the smoke coming from your head. You yeah. think y'all think it's hard. Y'all thinking y'all thinking hard, man. <laughs> <laughs> But, um, no, listen. I really, really appreciate. It. I know. I know it's taken. I know you're probably wondering why I was trying to have to I was trying to track you down, and then we had um, Rosemary and and Shana that was sending you messages as well. So listen, I'm so glad that we got to where we are now. Uh, we we're able to to have a, have a really good conversation. It's like an hour and a half uh, of of, of it's an hour and a half? I yeah. saw Charlie now. <laughs> <laughs> send, me the, send me the invoice. That way, send it through. All Starfleet voice act. No, they, the invoice will be to invest. Yeah. <laughs> no, we really, really went out. Really appreciate it. So, listen, thanks a lot. Listen, you enjoy the rest of your your day, whatever time it is you got there. Yeah, like four thirty over there. Yeah, thanks so much for your time, Vanessa. We appreciate you taking the time to speak to us. Uh, we we are not only gonna make sure we get on in the on the investment ladder, but we'll also spread the word with our wider group and try and get more people to invest and um we'll be really interested to see how things develop going forward oh absolutely i'm gonna be kind what y'all invest i'm gonna be hitting y'all up either not it might not be me but it might be jojo or alexa because we want to get that information set up in the uk yeah like if i can set up in the uk right away wherever it's easy to set up other than the us i'm gonna do it mm -hmm. yeah. no problem yeah, i fly wherever i need to fly but I'll do it. <laughs> what's, there to, what's there to hold you back? Yeah. You know? Yeah. And you, Mike, double O Zizzle, <laughs> get, that, like, get that little license. What you waiting on? <laughs> all right, all right. I'll start working on it. <laughs> oh, what you waiting on? <laughs> you gotta get this thing on and popping. <laughs> uh. All right, guys. All right. Take care. Thanks, uh, cheers, Talk Nessa. to you guys later. Okay. Right. See ya. Well, have a good one. Peace. Right, Thanks. Thanks. Bye. Oh, are you are you guys staying on? I can't stay on quickly. You're gonna stop the recording. Oh, hold on.